my dreams were becoming increasingly disjointed. I woke up sweaty and feeling quite heavy. I felt almost like I not slept at all, but I must have at some point. It was really too late morning to just go back to bed. I'd have to get up and start the day, whether I wanted to or not. After getting dressed, I went to the kitchen. Katashi had left something in the fridge for everyone's breakfast, so I helped myself to my portion. Katashi. He'd been in my dreams a lot. I couldn't remember them clearly, but there was Dai, her voice gleefully cutting down to zero. There was an airlock door, and something about strawberries. While the dreams faded quickly from my memory, the fear and concern for Katashi didn't. I couldn't decide how to make myself feel better. Go to Yoshiki and let him let his positive attitude and friendly smile calm me down? Or go and see Katashi and reassure, reassure myself that he was still alive and that I could make sure he stayed that way? So, in case you're wondering, each character does have a special sexual orientation. The reason why I bring this up is, as you may have guessed from the one conversation, Yoshiki is homosexual. Katashi is bisexual, so he'll go after the female MC or the male MC. These are both romance routes, potentially. We'll go with everyone's favorite bro, Yoshiki, though. Yoshiki could definitely cheer me up. I went to the engineering bay to find him, trying to forget about my troubled dreams. I could hear the loud music as soon as the door opened. Going inside, I found Yoshiki was dancing. He moved energetically and frenetically, almost flinging himself one way and then the other. His arms moved more than his feet as he let some force inside him take over. It wasn't organized, but it was actually quite beautiful dancing. He was graceful in the way he swept his feet along the floor. Yoshiki. He continued to dance, moving his hips and hands in a way I never realized it was possible. I tried to stop staring. Yoshiki! He still couldn't hear me over the music. I managed to stop watching him so I could get myself across the room to him. He was dancing with his eyes closed, obviously lost in the music. Once I reached him, I tapped him on the shoulder. But he moved at just the wrong moment, so my wrist hit his arm, which threw his leg off balance. His foot spun. He tripped, he grabbed me for support, and we both came tumbling down. I ended up on my back with him on top of me. <laughs> Gotta do it. I thought you'd buy me dinner first. Yoshiki blushed. Uh, I, um, sorry, I was, and then... I'm only joking. <laughs> sorry, I was dancing, and sometimes I get really into it. I didn't see you come in. Are you okay? Did I hurt you? I was covered in dust. Apparently the engineering bay needed a good cleaning. Yoshiki noticed me trying to rub the dust off my own back and went behind me to help. I'm fine. I didn't realize it was so dusty in here. I guess you don't spend a lot of time on the floor. Yoshiki finished brushing off my back and I turned around to see him again. All clean, no harm done. Wait, one last bit. Yoshiki brushed some dust gently off my cheek. There. As good as new. Yoshiki smiled. His cheeks went rosy peak in color, and he sheepishly looked away. I'd be more than happy to buy you dinner next time. Nobody buys dinner here. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll just have to make it for you. His offer is almost as sweet as his pink flushed cheeks. I think I'd like that. But why did you come to see me? Do you need something? Actually, I was hoping you would cheer me up. You always do, and you make it easy to forget the situation we're in. Thank you so much. It means a lot to me that you think of me like that. Of course I do. You're the ultimate mood improvement medicine. Nicholas and Beatrix should bottle you. <laughs> it's great to know I can help you, even if it's just to make you feel happy. And I do feel happy. Much better. You've recharged me. I don't know. I suspect you might still need some cheering up. Maybe we should dance. Yoshiki grabbed my hand and pulled me toward him, so I spun. Okay, so this one is especially cheerful. This is so cringy. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't know how many hours to spend in the engine bay. After we danced, Yoshiki showed me how to check the power output of the engines. We did some easy maintenance jobs and forgot all about the deletion game. Come on, Dai, it's just one line. Good morning, rise and shine, kids. This is your friendly neighborhood I. Except it's not I, it's Dai. 
She must mean AI. Requesting you all be in the dining room within half an hour or face the consequences. What the? I repeat, we are ready. All systems are go. This is not a drill. Get to that dining room in 29 minutes and 25 seconds. For a moment, my head was filled with Dai's piercing voice and absolutely nothing else. I didn't know where I was. Who was shouting, or even who I was. After a few seconds, I adjusted. It was definitely only Thursday. I counted back over the days since Dai explained the new game on Monday. There was no way I'd forgotten that much time. I looked at the clock. 7.23 a.m. Sure didn't feel like it. Maybe that was because I'd been woken up so suddenly and dramatically. As I got dressed, as quickly as possible, I wondered if this random summons was because someone broke the no-contact rule. And if so, who? My immediate thought was Beatrix and Nicholas. I doubt they were foolish enough to break the rules and risk punishment, but they had the strongest bond, the most incentive to collude. Though Di said half an hour, I was not willing to take any chances. As soon as I was dressed, I rushed down to the corridor and headed towards the dining hall. Yoshiki came out of his own quarters exactly as I passed by. I stopped for a moment to wait for him. What happened? Do you know what this is about? I think maybe someone broke the rule about not communicating with the other team. That's what I thought too, but who? The twins? Maybe? Or I thought Melody. That's possible. She's such a friendly kid she could easily forget. I really hope that wasn't the case. Dai had been very clear that there'd be punishment for breaking the rules, and I doubted she would care if it was an accident or a child forgetting. Tadashi and Nicholas were already in the dining hall when we got there. They were seated close to the door, while at the other end of the table, Beatrix and Kimiko were in whispered discussion. What happened? Did somebody break a rule? Nicholas sighed. <sighs> it was Beatrix and I, but I assure you, it wasn't collusion. We've been doing fine, sharing a quarters without talking. But she lost something this morning, and it was early, and she was sleepy and frustrated. Oh no! She asked if I'd seen it, just without thinking. I answered, and then we both realized what had happened. But then you didn't mean to. It's not fair to punish you for one mistake. It's not fair to pit us all against each other in a series of murder games, either. I don't think Dai cares about fairness. You'll just have to take our punishment. Hopefully it won't involve dying. The door opened and Vladimir came in, holding Melody's hand. The poor little kid was crying, and her father was trying to soothe her as they walked. Why is she not talking anymore? Welcome, welcome. It's about time the rest of Team B grace us with their presence. As I'm sure you are already aware, the rule forbidding communication between teams has been broken, which is why you've all been summoned here this morning. Di was looking around the room with the crew when she stopped and focused on Beatrix. Oh, dearie me, Trixie. You're looking a bit rough around the edges this morning. Just get on with it. Oh my. I wouldn't be talking like that if I'd broken the rules. It was an accident. It isn't like we said anything important. They didn't even talk about the game. Oh, my mistake. You can all return to your quarters. Really? Absolutely not. And I may be wrong here, but did the rules say you were allowed to talk if it wasn't about the game? Is that what the rules said? We can add it. Di looked around the room again. Oh wait, I remember. I made the rules and no. The rules said no communicating. But Trixie here is right. I need to get on with it. This is too exciting. Let the punishment commence. It was a mistake. If anyone is to be punished, it should be me. Please leave Beatrix out of this. Nicholas. Oh, how touching. Pity I am punishing everyone, including your precious sister. The rest of us weren't even involved. Tisk tisk, Captain. Trying to shirk responsibility. This is a team game, so everyone will be punished. There were several cries of outrage and frustration. Melody's crying got louder as she clung to her father. And the punishment is? The room fell completely silent as we waited with bated breath. Please not a dance competition, please not a dance competition. The deletion game! Oh, thank God. Di spread her arms theatrically as she made this declaration. The room remained silent. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. Was I not clear enough? Allow me to explain. Can you draw a picture? Instead of holding this round of the deletion game on Sunday as planned, we'll be playing it right now. But most of us are still half asleep. So, it's no skin off my nose. 
captain took a moment to consider her words before pursuing her argument. Die, if multiple crew members are half asleep during the current round, not only would it affect our ability to play the game, it could lead to something terrible. <laughs> like their deaths? Or a dance competition. Much worse, I'm afraid. Like a dance competition. What could possibly be worse? Don't keep me in suspense. A dance competition. Dai's eyes lit up at the gruesome possibilities. If everyone is half asleep, no one will perform well, and the game... well, the game would be... boring. Dai gasped, completely taken aback. Boring? No, 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 no! The game can't be boring! Games are supposed to be fun! Kimiko shrugged noncommittally. I know, but I guess there's no helping it now. Although Dai was doing her best to maintain her composure, it was clear Kimiko's argument had touched a nerve. Alright, alright. I'll give you all an extra hour to wake up and prepare so that you can all bring your A-game, okay? But that's the best I can do under the circumstances. That sounds fair. I'm sure we can all make do with that. Everyone seated at the table nodded in unison. With these new terms established, Dai seemed to regain her usual composure. Okay, good. You are to return here in an hour for the first round. Until then, however, until then, however, you are still forbidden from communicating with each other. Oh, and Trixie. What? Is an hour long enough for you to fix... this? Dai made a vague, circular gesture with her index finger in Beatrix's general direction, screwing up her face in disgust. Beatrix stormed towards Dai, her eyes filled with murderous intent. <laughs> I'll fix you. Nicholas shook his head in disapproval and gra grabbed his sister's arm as she began to edge closer to Dai. With a self-satisfied smile, Dai's form dissipated before their eyes. I... I... <sighs> Beatrix let out a frustrated cry as she wrenched her arm free from Nicholas's grasp. Nicholas painfully ignored his sister's frustration and focused on the task at hand. Now isn't the time for this. We need to prepare for the first round or we'll be putting ourselves at a serious disadvantage. Let's head to the rec room and work out our strategy. Operation Sacrifice Nicholas? That sounds like a good plan. Yoshiki grabbed my hand with one hand and Kanashi with the other and pulled us out of the dissipated dining hall towards the rec room. We arrived at the rec room and Nicholas immediately started discussing our strategy. I've been considering two particular strategies. All right, let's hear them. Our first option is to go through the rounds with two people on zero each time in order to spread the points over the other two. I thought that in was doing a lot. so, we'd increase their personal pools and hopefully win the rounds, assuming the other team decides to spread their points over all four people. So he read much further. Let's see what happens when I click. In doing so, we'd increase their personal pools and hopefully win the rounds, assuming the other team decides to spread their points over all four people. Really, really risky strategy because they can go 1 1 1 and 7 and pretty much be guaranteed 3 points if they find out about that. And our other option. Assume they're doing what I just described and spread out our points over all four of us. My 2 2 3 3 strategy. How would we go about spreading our points? We'd have to play it by ear until we saw the results of the first round. That makes sense. No point nailing down a plan when there are so many variables in play. Dai suddenly chimed in over the intercom system. Please assemble in the dining hall for this week's deletion game. Round one starts in five minutes. Woo! -hoo! That certainly didn't feel like an hour. It wasn't. It appears she's given us half an hour at best. What? But that's not fair! Well, she was going to make us play on the spot. A half hour is still better than nothing. I guess. Okay, let's make our way over now. For the second time that morning, we headed to the dining hall where we'd be forced to play the deletion game once again. So, real quick... Here we are. Hmm. There's less outcomes here than I thought. We arrived to find Dai lazing about, gazing at her nails disinterestedly. Oh goody, everyone's here. Now I know I said an hour, but... Just look at you all. There's nothing quite like the risk of death to wake you up in a hurry, is there? All right, let's play. Very well, Dai. Let's get this over with. I love your fighting spirit. 
Okay, so what I will need is for you all to wait outside during the other team's turn. You will get up to five minutes in the room to decide on your points allocation. Then after that, you can input your choice on the main terminal. However, all hands will have to be placed on the terminal in agreement. Team A, you are up first. Team B, get out. The members of Team B hastily left the dining hall and left us alone with Di in the dining hall. The dining table now projected a shimmering holographic terminal. Your five minutes starts now! Okay. I've put together the promising configurations. Please choose whichever one you prefer. These suck. The closest one to my strategy is the 1333. Is everyone in agreement? Yes. Yep. I input the allocation using the terminal and everyone else placed their palms there. Their palms there to approve it. That's the wrong there. It's not even it. Yeah. Thank you for your entry. Please exit the dining hall so that stinky Team B can assign their points. They don't smell that bad. It's mostly Vladimir. It smells like vodka. We quickly shuffled out of the dining hall and Team B entered for their turn. Nicholas leaned up against the wall and his fingers pressed against his glasses and his eyes in deep thought. Frustrating, isn't it? Indeed it is, Katashi. Aren't all the games frustrating? Nicholas and Katashi both smiled at Yoshiki as if he was a simple child. Yes, but this one especially. There is no way for me to determine their numbers with any degree of certainty. It relies almost entirely on luck. After a few tense minutes of waiting, Team B exited the dining hall. Dai followed, boisterous as usual. Wonderful start to the betting wars. Both teams are fighting hard. Now let's see the results of round one. If you would be so kind as to draw your attention to this screen. Dai projected a screen using the same light she was made of. And the winner of round one is... It was a close one, but Team B is leading the charge. Let's move on to round two. Okay, let me hide this so you guys can see. So they went for the 0118. <laughs> so I'm just, like, I don't remember, is it captain versus captain, or are we just range from least to most? Team A, you are up again. Please follow me. Di appeared to walk through the walls. We made our way back into the dining hall. Your five minute starts now. Okay, we are losing. But we still have two battles left, so we are still in this. We're actually winning, I thought. Oh no, we're already losing. I'm gonna kill someone. Get a hold of yourself. There are still two opportunities for us to turn this around. My suggestions are... Using the terminal, or else place their palms there to approve it. Thank you for your entry. Please exit the dining hall so that stinky Team B can assign their points. If you would be so kind as to draw your attention to this screen. I have a feeling this time we lost. Dive projected a screen using the same line she was made of. And the winner round two is. Tie. Really? A tie? The probability of this is. Please die, no more math. I get enough at home. <laughs> no, not really, you twit. Team A, you are up again. Please follow me. Di appeared to walk through the wall as we made our way back into the dining hall. Your five minutes starts now. Um, guys, we are losing. I know, I know, I'm thinking. I, I don't want anyone to die. Okay, here's what our options are. Congratulations, Team B! After three rounds, you have come out victorious! And that means... Team A, you lose! Congrats! And the lucky winner of the wheel is... Nicholas. Well, now that's a shame. The average hotness of this crew is about to take a major dive. No, 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 no. No, it can't be him. First off, Chicks, he can be anyone I say. And secondly, he lost the game fair and square. I... 
Yes, I did. Nicholas, I'm so sorry. We didn't do this on purpose. I need to review this because I don't quite understand what else is going on here. We didn't choose you or want you to lose. I know. The points simply fell this way. How can you be so calm? Someone has to die. I'm just glad it isn't you. Well, I'm not. I'm sorry, kids. No, wait, not sorry. The other thing. Excited, yes, that's it. Excited. Let's spin that wheel. Guy's colorful glowing wheel of death appeared beside her, lights flashing. So, Nicholas, please tell the audience, what kind of death are you hoping for today? I'm not answering that. You'll stop the wheel on the opposite. Are you implying that the wheel of death is rigged? How dare you, sir? It's not real. Of course you control it. I have never been so insulted. You don't trust the wheel? Fine. I will choose for you. To the medical bay. Nicholas started moving towards the medical bay, but no one else moved. Come on. We better do what she says. We all know what will happen if we resist. Nicholas, how are you taking this so well? Well, it's bought my sister another week. And she is all I care about in life and in death. Beatrix was now sobbing uncontrollably. <laughs> That's not... Nicholas. This isn't fair. This whole thing isn't fair, dear sister. Nicholas placed his hands on either side of Beatrix's face and forced her to look at him as he spoke calmly. But it's no more unfair for me than anyone else. Alright, enough chatter. Let's get moving. Come on now. Left, right, left, right, left, right. We didn't march, but we did hurry onto the corridor and towards the medical bay. There must be... some way to... fix this. Nope. Keep marching, we're almost there. Left, right, left, right, left, right. She kept up the marching rhythm for the rest of the walk, shining so loudly that no one could hear over it, though Beatrix kept trying to speak. Once we made it to the medical bay, she continued the rhythm right up to the surgical room. Left, right, left, right, left, right. And stop. Kadashi stopped so suddenly I walked into his back. Captain had to grab me to stop me from falling. Nicholas, if you'd hop up onto this chair, we'll get started. Don't I get goodbyes? Daya sighed and rolled her eyes. Fine, two minutes. Nicholas went to the captain first, nodding to her with a slight smile. I was impressed they managed to stay suave and cool even, when, even while preparing for death. Captain, I appreciate that you've been doing your best under the circumstances. I don't want you to feel responsible for this. I... I'm sorry. You didn't program die. Well, no, but... I'd appreciate it if you could be patient with my sister and give her some leeway for a while. Of course. Thank you. His next goodbye was for Beatrix. But we didn't get to hear it. He drew her aside and spoke to her in a low voice. Beatrix is now as cool and soft as her brother. She continued to whimper as she reached out and hugged him. The hug lasted maybe 30 seconds before Nicholas pulled away. He whispered to his sister again before coming to stand in front of the rest of us. I'm ready. Congratulations, Nicholas. You have won exsanguiation. That means death by blood loss. Who knows the meaning of the word exsanguination? I spoiled it. No. No. Not you. Unfair advantage. Sanguine is Latin for blood. So logically, exsanguination involves not having blood. Ding, ding. Ten points to the lady at the front. That's because she heard my answer. Nicholas doesn't have any blood? No, Yoshiki. I have blood, but I will die from blood loss. <gasps> and I'm gonna need a volunteer from the audience. Ooh, Melody, Melody. It was no surprise that nobody put their hand up. Come on, don't make me pick someone. Kanashi stepped forward. Better me than Beatrix. What do I have to do? Don't worry, you'll just be doing some light killing today. I don't believe it's habit forming. If symptoms persist, please see your doctor. The one that's still alive, that is. No disrespect to either Dai or yourself, Katashi, but I think I can handle this. Oh, Nicholas, you make me weak at the knees. I really am going to miss you. Nicholas took a seat in the medical bay and began the process himself. He placed a needle into his right arm and watched as the blood started spilling into the above bag. He placed his glasses on his leg and made himself comfortable. Now everyone knows the rules. Stay back from Nicholas during his time of need. Please, keep my blood in storage, in case anyone needs it in the coming weeks. Over my dead body is anyone touching your blood. That can be very quickly arranged, Beatrix. Beatrix. Sorry, brother. Melody was staying beside Vladimir, watching on with great interest. I like Nicholas. Is he going away forever? 
Like Mommy and Chizuka? I'm afraid so, sweetie. Why don't you turn around now? Melody shook her head. I want to see what Jai is doing. Will it hurt him? I don't think so. You can look for now, but you have to turn around when I say, okay? Okay. Well, audience, our glamorous assistant was next to useless, but a round of applause for his enthusiasm to kill a fellow crew member. There was silence. I said applause, or else. As Katashi came back to the group, we each put our hands together for a few unenthusiastic claps. Melody copied. Nicholas, I'm sorry. Now, theoretically, he should die once I drained one-third to one-half of his blood volume. But I'm keen to push the boundaries. Let's see what he can handle. No, he can actually survive that, believe it or not. Losing a third of your blood is pretty detrimental, but it's not that bad. When you lose a half, that's when things start to get iffy and you have organ problems. For science! Nicholas Vogel, your service to the Everett has been exceptional. We honor your sacrifice today, and we will remember your bravery and integrity. Salute! The crew saluted. Melody copied into the same. Well now, that's interesting. Only 30 seconds and already his pulse is way down. Keep your eyes on those vitals, folks. Dai was pointing out the screen readout, which showed Nicholas's rapidly falling heart rate. His blood pressure was on the same screen. It dropped very suddenly. He's going into shock after only a 5 eighths loss of blood. Disappointing. Nicholas's skin had gone white and translucent as the hairs on his body all started standing up on edge. Melody, turn around now. Melody did turn to face her father, but she kept saluting. Nicholas dropped out of consciousness and slumped in his chair as the room was filled with Beatrix's cries, and the monitoring machines let out vital alarm tones. I don't know, I feel like that could have gone better. We'll have to remember for next time. Now, because we have another medic here and I don't trust her at all, we will now wait the customary six minutes to ensure that revival is not possible. Time see Dai seemed flippant about waiting around. So, Capitan, anything new in the world of space and stuff? The captain just rolled her eyes. She refused to engage Dai in conversation. Rude, just rude. Minutes passed as the room was silent other than the sobs from Beatrix. Okay, team, time's up. You may now approach the corpse. Speaking of time, I hope to see you all in the soon for the next deletion game. Thanks for playing. With that, Dai disappeared. Beatrix ran up to Nicholas and started to embrace his now lifeless body. Beatrix. Looking up from Nicholas, Beatrix started glaring at Katashi, Yoshiki, and I. This is all your fault. She didn't shout. Beatrix's voice was cool and filled with detached rage. You did this to him. Without another word, Beatrix turned and gently kissed Nicholas's forehead, pulled the needle from his arm, took the blood bag he had filled, and left the medical bay. This isn't Team A's fault. Katashi, can you help me with his body? Of course. Do you think it hurt a lot? Not really, no. I don't think so. You, I think you went to sleep and didn't feel anything else after. That's good. I think so, too. Kimiko and Kanashi went into the room to deal with the unpleasant reality of yet another body. The rest of us went our separate ways, most of us to our quarters, to hide away and wonder who the deletion game would take next. Almost at the end, there's one, two more games to play. Now it looks like these are gonna go by fast. I was stirred awake. I could feel something touching me. I froze for a moment and realized someone was holding my hand. What the? I heard a muffled voice coming from the covers. Hey, bestie. It's just me. Get out. I turned the lights on to see what was going on. Yoshiki, what are you doing here? Even when asleep, your hand still gripped me back. What are you talking about? You are still alive. Yoshiki seemed distraught, but cheerfully distraught. I felt your hand hold me back. Yoshiki, what is this about? Yoshiki's cheerful distraught demeanor shifted to, dis to just distraught. Yoshiki began mumbling to himself. Yoshiki was still a bit shaken up after Nicholas's death. Of his mumbles, I can only make out team and stranger. A dead stranger. Yoshiki twitched before grabbing my hand again, albeit slightly aggressively. You're not dead, and you're not a stranger. You're... 
Yoshiki. You're alive. Your hand, it, it holds me back. <laughs> this one is so tempting, man. Two can play this game, Yoshiki. Yoshiki began to squirm in pain, breaking his demeanor. Ow! 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 Yoshiki, great news! Yoshiki recoiled, holding his hand delicately, sulking. What, that you're a big meanie? He knows the score now. Quite the opposite. You're alive! Yoshiki took a moment before smiling. You're right! We both are! Yep, so let's keep it that way. Sorry for getting so weird with you. It's just... Yoshiki paused. You mean a lot to me. And... I waited intently for Yoshiki to finish. I would be really upset if Dai took you out before I did. Oh, great, he's thinking of her suicide. Yoshiki laughed as he jumped out of my bed. Well, until next breakdown. <laughs> Toodles. Before I could even reply, Yoshiki had run out of my quarters. I looked at the time. 4.53 a.m. Uh, guess I could get a few more hours of sleep. I curled back down in my bed and got a those few more hours of sleep. So in case you're wondering, romanceable options that are still in the game are the Captain, Kadashi, and Yoshiki. The heterosexual female is Shizuka, and you know she's on ice. I woke feeling quite refreshed. Perhaps having Yoshiki sabotage my sleep was good for me. Thinking of Yoshiki, I figured I should probably check in on him. I made my way to the engineering bay out of instinct. Hey, Yoshiki, you feeling? He wasn't there. I looked at my tablet for his location. In the rec room, eh? I made my way to the rec room. When I arrived, I found Yoshiki sitting and staring intensely at the chessboard. Hey, bestie, how we feeling? Oh, perfect timing. Do you know how to play chess? I guess so, but I've never played with another person. Did your parents teach you? No, they didn't have time for that. It was one of the game applications in the pod's computer. So a computer taught you? I guess it did. Can you please teach me how to play? Why the sudden interest in chess? You were right. We aren't dead yet. And so I need to lift my gaming skills if I want to survive. And you decided to learn chess. Why not just play some of Shizuka's games? Yoshiki looked away for a moment. She never let me play them when she was alive. Why should now be any different? Well, she had some time to chill out, and things could be different now. I took a moment before I responded. What games do you know how to play? Perhaps trying to learn a new game isn't the best way to hone your skills. Mm, I guess that makes sense. So what do you know how to play? Um, let me think. I stood quietly for a moment while I waited for Yoshiki to come up with an answer. So, if I take the 1 and minus it from the 2, and then divide the result with... Uh... Yoshiki, why are you doing math? I have bad news, bestie. What is that? Well, my calculations are in, and uh... Why are you doing calculations? Yoshiki continued on phase I was becoming frustrated with him. I don't know any games. So, we could be in a bit of a pickle. How did that require math? Everything is maths. I was left stunned for a moment, unsure of how to respond when I had a great idea. Twenty questions. That's the spirit! Let the numbers flow through you! No, no, as in we can play the game Twenty Questions. It's a very easy game to play. Oh, okay. So, think of something. Anything you like and pretend you are that thing. Ice cream! No, don't. Strawberry ice cream! I had to take a breath before continuing. Okay, change of plans. I'm not ice cream? Yoshiki! Don't you like ice cream? I will pick something, and you have to ask me yes or no questions. You only get 20 questions, and then you have to guess what I am. Okay, I can do this. Fantastic. Have you thought of something? So if I say yes, can I count as the first question? Okay, give me your first question. Are you ice cream? Well, are you? No, Yoshiki, I am not ice cream. Oh. You have 19 questions left. Hmm. 
I waited for a moment with the belief that Yoshiki was deep in thought. Katashi probably has some ice cream! Yoshiki jumped up and ran out of the rec room. I could always play with you. Grab a seat, I don't have anyone else. <laughs> I jumped with fright. Dai, you need to wear like a cat bell or something. That is an interesting image. Give me a moment. Dai's image flickered, this time with her wearing a cat collar. Is this more to your liking? And just so you can fully appreciate it, there you go. I, um... Are you blushing? By the way, she is romanceable, I should add. I avoided eye contact with Dai. You're cute when you blush. Thank you, I guess, and thank you for putting that on. Now, we can hear you coming. Wait, this wasn't for a fetish? No, it was... Dai flickered back to her usual self, collar free. I am very disappointed with you. I thought we were bonding. Dai, I'm so... The damage is done. Dining hall in ten minutes for the new game explanation. I reached my hand out towards her, but she dissipated as she let out a sigh of disappointment. How does a psychotic murderous AI make me feel bad? I quickly gathered myself and my thoughts and made my way to the dining hall. I arrived at the dining hall where everyone was already gathered and I was the last to arrive. About time. Why are you late? But I'm not late. You said ten minutes. You are the last one here. That makes you late. Does that mean I get to choose the game? Because I choose twenty questions. I... Well? Well? Apologize to your crew and to me for keeping us waiting. Dai, that is not necessary. Please get on with it. I am defending your honor. You defend nothing. How dare you? I defend and protect more than you could even fathom. The captain and Dai were starting to get superheated. I decided to break the tension and just apologize. Crew, I am sorry that I am late and that I have insulted your honor. Yoshiki nodded as if this was expected as Dai turned to face me as... Well, I assume. Dai, I'm sorry for insulting your honor also. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Great, now we can cancel the game and go home. Does it really? Dai waved off the captain dismissively. Gram it, captain. Can't you see we're bonding? I smiled meekly at Dai, who was still staring... who was still intensely gazing at me. All right. Bonding complete. Let's move on. Ahem. Welcome to the next round of the deletion game. Vampire children. Vampire children has played over three rounds. You start with one vampire, right? One person will randomly be assigned the role of the vampire. The other six players will be humans. No one else will, no one will know who's a vampire and who's a human. During each round, you may breed with one person. You can never breed with the same person twice. When two humans breed, two babies are created. Two babies for the human count, one point each. If a human and vampire breed, no babies are born. Rather, the human becomes a vampire unknowingly. And the vampire children count is increased by one. If after three rounds more babies exist than vampires, humans win. And the vampire is executed. But if after three rounds more vampires exist than babies, the vampire wins. And the human with the least babies is executed. Because being a vampire can be lonely. The original vampire can take a partner in crime. However, if the vampires still lose, both the vampire partners will be executed. So, who do you trust with your life? Good luck. Vampire Children is played over three cycles. And she's gonna explain this thing. One person will be chosen at random by me, and be made the vampire. I'll tell this person in secret, and the six other people are humans. No one will know for sure who is a vampire and who is a human, other than themselves. 
During each cycle, you have the choice to either mate with another person or not. It's not compulsory, but definitely advisable. However, you can't mate with the same person twice, even during different cycles. Where's the fun in that, right? Every time two humans mate, two children are born. When one human and one vampire mate, no children are born. But that human becomes a vampire for life, and for point's sake, a vampire child. If two vampires mate, nothing happens except a good time. Only the original vampire will know that they're a vampire. Humans who unknowingly mate with a vampire won't know until the end of the game. After each cycle, I will announce the total count, human babies produced, and new vampires created. After three cycles, the human and vampire children counts will be tallied. If there are more vampire children than humans, the human that created the fewest human babies will be executed. If more human babies exist, the starting vampire will be executed. Now, one versus six can seem lonely. So here's my offer to the soon-to-be vampire. The vampire can choose a bonnie to their Clyde. This person will knowingly and willingly become a vampire in the first round and will win and lose alongside the vampire. If the vampire wins, so do they. And so they are spared from death. But if the vampire loses, so does that person. And we have a double execution. Be careful though, your Bonnie and Clyde dreams may be short-lived and your partner might out you as the vampire. So tell others at your own risk. I will notify you of your human or vampire status sometime before the game begins on Sunday morning. Ah, uh, this is my favorite game to date. Any questions? Need me to repeat? Didn't need it the first time. Excellent. Dai suddenly zapped out of the room and the broadcast opened overhead, where we could all hear Dai using her best customer service voice. We understand that you have a choice in Deletion Game Carrier, and want to thank you all so much for choosing the Dai Deletion Game service. We murder for your satisfaction, and we look forward to servicing you again this Sunday.